Hey guys, what's up? This is AJ again of Version Code, and for this episode, we are going to be talking about a particular integration service offered by AWS called Step Functions and how it works with other AWS services. So, if you're just now hearing about Step Functions and you want to know how it works or what it does, or if you're interested in implementing an, an architecture with it, the AWS Step Functions is a service provided by AWS that allows you to simply orchestrate different AWS services together to fulfill different tasks. Step functions allows you to create steps in a process where the output of one step becomes the input of another step, also with the help of a visual workflow editor, which you will see in just a minute. Now, step functions is an extremely useful orchestration platform, and another good thing about it is that it is serverless, meaning you don't have to have it set up in your own machine or server and maintain it. AWS manages this for you. And now you're wondering where you might use this orchestration service. One popular use case of an orchestration like AWS Staff Functions is that it pieces together different microservices in a microservice architecture. In AWS, commonly this microservice could be a Lambda function but other services may also be defined as a step like a DynamoDB or Amazon EMR or SQS or SNS and so on to perform a particular more granular unit of work. Like for example, in our illustration here, a Lambda function and AWS Fargate have been defined as steps for, to perform the encoding of a particular image. Images with a larger size and resolution are processed by Fargate, while smaller images are handled by a Lambda function. A choice state is defined in the step function's state machine to direct the input files in the right path based on a given variable. Step functions can also be used to implement complex ETL workflows, like in our example here, several AWS glue jobs have been defined to as a task to process sales and marketing data. For those who aren't familiar with AWS Glue, it is a serverless data integration service offered by AWS for preparing and combining data to be used for analytics or machine learning. And of course, you can use step functions for developing sequence steps of machine learning workflows. For example, in our illustration here, again, an AWS Glue job has been defined as a task to produce the data that will be processed by a series of Amazon SageMaker tasks, which is a, again another step or task. Now you've heard me mention states, tasks, choices. What exactly are these? Well, a state is an element in your state machine, and the state machine is something you create to define the states or steps of your workflow. Tasks or choices are the kinds of states that you can define in your state machine. And there's actually several of these states. A task state represents a single unit of work performed by a state machine. Many different AWS services can be defined as a task and be integrated with step functions. Commonly, these are services like Lambda, DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, AWS Batch, and even more specialized AWS, AWS services, which you saw from the illustrations earlier, like AWS Fargate, AWS Glue, AWS SageMaker, and many more. A choice state adds branching logic to a state machine. It sets out options which path you want your input to be directed based on the value of a certain variable. A path state just passes its input to its output without performing any work. This state is useful for when constructing and debugging state machines. A parallel state can be used to create parallel branches of execution in your state machine. A wait state delays the state machine from continuing for a specified time. You could use this for when you want a separate parallel task to complete, which you are dependent on. A succeed state stops an execution successfully while a fail state stops the execution of the state machine and marks it as a failure. 
And finally, the map state can be used to run a set of steps for each element of an input array. Now, for you to be able to work with AWS Step functions, you will need to write your state machine using the Amazon state language, which honestly, I find it daunting as there's actually quite a bit of learning curve. But don't let this stop you from using or learning Step functions. Once you get the hang of it, everything will be fine. And don't worry, we will be talking quite a bit about this as I discussed to you the ASL I prepared for the state machine that we will create later. What you are seeing here is the state machine editor of step functions in the AWS console. And the one on the left is the text editor for your ASL, while the right side is actually quite amusing because it is the visual, visual representation of your workflow as you make changes to your ASL code. So what I decided to do for our step functions demo is an ATM workflow, which in no way translates to how an actual ATM machine is programmed to work. This will be very basic and simple, just to give you a brief background on how you're going to write your first state machine in AWS step functions. So what you can see from this diagram are a bunch of task and choice states that make up our state machine. The first step will be the TXN init service, which is a Lambda function that initializes the, transa the transaction by generating a tra transaction ID and the transaction date and time. Next, we will authenticate the user of the ATM by checking if the pin in the request matches the stored pin for the, the requested account ID. If it doesn't match, it will just head straight to the transaction logger, which is a task um, defined as a DynamoDB to log the transaction, indicating that the authentication failed or that the, the pin is incorrect. If it does pass, however, we will proceed to another choice state, checking if the transaction type, which is also included in the request, is a balance inquiry or a withdrawal, and proceed to the corresponding services that will handle such transactions. At the end, either transaction will still pass through the transaction logging task to be logged in the DynamoDB table. Again, this isn't an accurate representation of how an actual ATM works. There will also be very little validations of the request to just make our demo simpler. And you will notice later that this diagram resembles the visual workflow displayed in the AWS console, as you saw, saw earlier from the previous slide, once we finish coding our ASL for the state machine. Now, before you create your state machine, please ensure that you already have a role with all the policies to work with the AWS services you need attached to it. Um, for my case, I have attached an AWS Lambda role because our state machine will be invoking some Lambda functions and a DynamoDB access to save transactions into our DynamoDB table. Now let's head over to step functions and under state machine, click create state machine. Um, there's not much to change here. When creating a state machine, you can choose which type you want to create, either a standard or exp express. Normally, you would use standard for things like ETL, machine learning, or um, order fulfillment, like for your online store or retail or shipping. And um, Express is more recommended for event-driven workflows, like for IoT, data streaming, or for when you want to use it as an orchestration for a uh, microservice architecture. Um, if you click Help Me Decide, it'll list down all the differences between standard and express. But one key difference is with how you're, you will be priced for using a certain type. For standard, you will be priced for every state transition or each time a step in your state machine is completed, while in express it is for every execution of your state machine, how long it took to finish, and the memory consumed by the execution. This is the text editor where we will write your, our ASL code later, but for now, we'll just keep the default. Um, and this is the visual workflow, which is the graphical representation of your ASL code. 
and it gets updated as you change something in your ASL. Um, we're just going to name this ATM State Machine. And under permissions, you have to select the role you created that presumably already contains the necessary policies. As for my case, that is demo step functions role, which I've shown you earlier. And now let's hit create state machine. And this will now create the state machine for our ATM workflow. Now let's head over to our code and get started with writing our Lambda functions. But first off, what you are seeing here is the ASL for our ATM state machine. The way you start the execution of your state machine is by specifying the name of the state you want to start with in the start at field. For our case, that is the TXN init service where we will initialize our, trans our transaction by adding an ID and date and time. The states field should contain all the states of our state machine, be it a task or a choice state and so on. Then. This is the block of TXN init service, which is a task state where we will start when the state machine is triggered. And the way you define a state is you should always specify what type of state it is in the type field. So here, TXN init service is a task state. The resource field specifies the resource to use for this state. For TXN init service, it is a Lambda function that should be invoked. Function name is where we will set the ARN of the Lambda function. And we can obtain that once we deploy these Lambda functions using serverless. The payload field is where we can specify the object containing the request that TXM init service will process. For our case, we set the dollar symbol to refer to the request object, which by the way, I should tell you that we will trigger our state machine by opening up a RESTful API and submit a request from there. And from the TXM init service, we will refer to this request through an object named input. Now, when a Lambda function responds back to our state machine, not only will it return the response we need, it will also include some additional fields that may not be of use or important to us. So it's really pointless to have those included and be passed in the next state. And this could be the same for any other AWS service that you'll integrate with step functions like DynamoDB or EMR. So the way we select or filter out the data that we only need from the response is through using the result selector. And a result selector allows us to manipulate a state's result before result path is applied. And as you can see from our ASL code here, we only need the TXN ID and the TXN date time returned from the response of TXN in its service. Now, the result path gives us the, the output of a task to be passed on to another state or step. By default, or if you don't specify a result path, the state will just return the entire result of the Lambda function, replacing the existing input object. But that is not what we want. Instead, we want to include the response of the Lambda function to the existing input object. Now, if we set something like $.metadata in the result path, this will just set response we got from TXN init service into a field called metadata and append or include this new metadata field in the input object or the current object referred to by the dollar symbol. And finally, we have the next field, which just points to the next state or step after this state has finished executing. So this one just tells that the next step after initializing the transaction is to authenticate the user, as described from our diagram earlier. And this will all be pretty much the same for all the other task states we have. Now, if we refer to the auth service, you will see that the Lambda function for auth service will return a Boolean if it's authenticated or not, the status of, of the transaction if it's successful or failed, and the message which may include the error message if there are any. Now we have two choice tasks. The first just checks if authentication is successful 
which should be a Boolean value of true. If it is true, it will just proceed to the next choice state, which is a transaction type. If it's false or anything else, it will just default to our transaction logger. The next choice task just checks if the tr transaction type is a valid string or a withdrawal string and just directs them to their corresponding task states, which are also defined in this ASL code. Now, our final state is another task state, but it will be a DynamoDB resource to add transactions in a DynamoDB table. If you are familiar with the AWS SDK API for DynamoDB, this just resembles the parameters of the put item method. The table name will be transaction logs, which we will create also using serverless. And the fields are the transaction ID, the account ID, transaction type, status, message, and transaction date time, all of which can be obtained from the input object that got appended and passed on to different states. We also included the end field here and set it to true, indicating that this is the final step in our state machine. Now, what I'm going to do is copy this ASL code and paste it to the text editor of our state machine. And as you can see, the visual workflow to the right got updated and it kind of resembles our diagram from earlier. Later, we will paste the ARS of the Lambda functions here once they have been deployed. So, um, let's save this. Now I will just copy the ARN of our state machine and paste it to our serverless.yaml file to give our Lambda functions function the permission to trigger the state machine. Now, I will be using the serverless framework to deploy this on AWS with the serverless file where the Lambda functions, the DynamoDB table, and the permission to trigger the state machine are defined. But just so you know, learning how to use serverless framework is not required to follow along with this tutorial. I am just using it to easily deploy my Lambda functions and create the DynamoDB file for our transaction logs. For your case, you may just use the AWS console or the AWS CLI to perform the same set of tasks. Nonetheless, if you wish to learn serverless framework to deploy your serverless apps on AWS, I have given the link to the tutorial I made on how to use serverless in the description below. But again, knowing serverless is not required to follow this demo. So don't be worried if you're not familiar with serverless or you don't have the serverless CLI installed yet. It's completely up to you how you can go about creating the AWS resources we need for this demo. Now, before we start to write our Lambda functions, you should know that we aren't gonna be using an actual database for storing user info just to keep things simpler. And I don't wanna overload you with any knowledge not directly related to step functions. So what I did here is to just write a JavaScript object containing the ADM users identified by an account ID with some included details like the remaining balance and PIN. First off, let's start writing the Lambda function to trigger our state machine. Functions, step functions, uh, sports, caller, context, callback, const parents, state machine, we are in that body. And let's call step functions using the start execution function from the AWS SDK. If, uh, oops, let's solve here. Const, const, 
500. Uh, an error occurred. Error. Callback. Oops. Uh, so let's just copy this entire thing and paste it here. Turn 200. Step. Step functions triggered. Uh, so let's just copy this state machine ARN and paste it here. Uh, now let's write the, the TXN init service. UID. So init event context callback. Metadata. So let's make use of the UID to generate a TXN ID. And let's get the current date. ISO stream. Let's return this null metadata. Um, next is we will write the auth service. Uh, this should authenticate our user using the provided pin and the request. Auth event um, context callback. Event. Counts mock DB if yeah. to request our pin count is um, authenticated response object um, this should return is authenticated with a value of true since the request pin match the stored pin with a status of success and a message of the count is authenticated. If it doesn't match, um, is authenticated will be false. Let's just copy this. Uh, is authenticated will be false and we will return a failed response. Callback null response. Um, let's write the lambda function for balance inquiry service. TV. Uh, 
exports think event context callback input um, Your account balance is dollars. Oops. Account quest dot account ID. Status success uh, message callback null response uh, uh, okay but finally the lambda function for withdrawal service. Amount plus or two counts. Count ID. Counts. Stop mount. You have the drawn request what about your new balance is dollar block response object let's return the status of success the message So let's build our code to deploy our Lambda functions using serverless. Uh, SLS deploy. Again, you don't need serverless for this demo. You can just make use of either the AWS console or the AWS CLI to create AWS resources we need, like the uh, Lambda functions and DynamoDB table. Now that it's finished building, um, let's head over to our AWS console under Lambda. Uh, and you will see here that uh, serverless was able, able to deploy all the Lambda functions we wrote, including the one for uh, the REST API trigger. Just gonna open all of these uh, Lambda functions in a new tab. Uh, and 
now what we should do is to uh, uh, copy the ARMs of these Lambda functions and paste it over to our ASL code. Cloud service. This is for the balance inquiry service. And uh, this is the Lambda function for the withdrawal service. And let's save this first. And uh, if you go to DynamoDB, you will see that uh, we have also created the transaction logger table using serverless. Now uh, let's copy this, a this URL to trigger our state machine and paste it over to Postman. Uh, I will write this uh, request in JSON with an account ID of uh, 1111. Pin of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's try a balance inquiry transaction. And hit send. As you can see, it appears that uh, we are able to trigger our state machine successfully. And if we go back to our console in step functions, uh, as you can see right here, we have one execution. And if you go to this execution, you will see this uh, visual workflow. And as you can see, everything went through when we triggered this state machine. Uh, it first went to the TXN init service, which is a Lambda function. If we check the step input, you will see the request we sent from our RESTful API. It is a balance inquiry transaction. Uh, and under step output, the result is the object as the in input, except that we just added the new metadata field in the result path, which is the response from the Lambda function. If we go to auth service um, under step input, uh, you will see that we just passed in the same object responded by the previous step, which is TXN init service. And in step output, auth service will respond with same object, except it added the new response field, of course, containing the is authenticated field, which is set to true. There is also the is authenticated choice state here. Uh, and since it's set to true, it proceeded to the next choice state, which is a transaction type. And as you can see from this input, this is a balance inquiry transaction. So it proceeded to the balance inquiry service and to the final step, which is the transaction logger to be logged in the DynamoDB. And in DynamoDB, you will see that we have inserted the bounce inquiry transaction, which is th this one. Let's submit another request. This time it's a withdrawal transaction. Okay. With an amount of uh, say 20 bucks. Let's submit this. Okay. This 
this is our new execution. And if we check this, uh, you will see that the flow also completed, except that this time it's now a withdrawal transaction. And if we refresh our table, you will see that uh, we saved the withdrawal transaction, which is this one. This time, let's submit a request with an incorrect pin. Okay. And if we see our visual workflow, this is the execution. And in this visual workflow, you can see that the execution also completed, except that since we entered an incorrect pin, it failed to authenticate and just went straight to the transaction logger. And if we refresh our table, where is it? Ah, it's this one. You will see that it also logged the failed authentication we did, which is this one. As you can see, our staff functions state machine is completely working. We built the resources we need, including the, lab, the Lambda functions and the DynamoDB table using serverless. We then specify the ARNs of the Lambda functions in our ASL code. Now, you might be curious, can we also make use of the serverless to create the state machine configured with the same ASL code? The answer is yes, we could have, but since this is an introductory demo of step functions, um, I wanted you guys to see the native creation and monitoring of your state machine from the AWS console. Also, building and deploying AWS resources using the serverless framework is not within the scope of this tutorial. But again, if you want to learn how you can go about doing so, go ahead and check the tutorial I made about AWS and serverless which I've linked in the description below. This code is also uploaded on GitHub, which I've also pasted the link in the description below for you to easily refer to. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section and I'll try to answer them. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.